very good morning and a very 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 happy christmas for years and years you will all recall we used to be looking forward to the new year and since today is the last saturday of this year i thought let me reflect over how this year is going to be every year without fail we used to be looking forward oh new year is coming what are you doing for new year how are we celebrating how are we going to do this and that so many things used to keep happening but this year you know how it is we had an experience of this last year also when we were just coming out of the first wave and we were not sure how things were and there was a tentative the thought that yes now we can start celebrating now we can start looking forward to the normal old normal days and before you know it the second wave struck then there was a threat of a third wave which happily did not come but then now there is a threat of that fourth wave of the omicron which is hanging like a sword over our heads and with that we are facing this government is trying to be very careful saying that no big parties allowed no gatherings allowed you have to stay at home so many places night curfew has been imposed great dampeners for the spirit of new year isn't it that is okay as far as the new year is concerned but when we look upon the whole year for example what do we look forward to can we say okay the you know and the uh, lockdowns and the covid is over and now we'll begin a new year how do we say no people are saying that omicron will be there january february after that we will start off and then we will get back to normalcy or as the doomsday prophets may be saying this will go on and on and on and on this has become what they are calling as the new normal so in all these clouds i was giving a lot of thought in the last few days what should we do as individuals we are not people in authority we have nothing we don't have control over others but as individuals what is it that we can do to look forward to 2022 first thing i just wanted to caution you that stress is cumulative so even though 2020 was totally unexpected the lockdown that came in march and we were you know very very uh, sort of badly locked in and so much of the covid was going on people falling sick people requiring oxygen some tragic deaths taking place all that we went through in 2020 and as i said we started recovering a little bit but in 2021 when the second wave came more than the numbers more than how many people fell sick and what happened i'm not interested in statistics but the cumulative stress people said oh again it has come and that caused more stress than what 2020 we had gone through so before we start talking about 2022 please become aware that our stress levels this year have doubled up from what they were last year even if things were not very bad even as individuals if you did not go through anything very unhappy or tragic even if you managed your income was not hurt your work went on your family was comfortable nobody acquired covid in your family or nearest uh, uh, circles even if all that has happened please be aware that this year the stress has doubled up from last year so first thing that we need to take into account is how we will be dealing with the stress which is going to be tripling up in 2022 depending on how the situation uh, goes see what happens is that we get so scared when these sort of things uh, uh, happen and my observation has been that the fears the scares have been multiplying multiplying people have become you know so paranoid some people at least that i come across they are just not willing to even look forward or to think that yes something can uh, happen and something should happen we are not looking at the positive aspect we many of us have become so dreadfully negative you know 
we have become so pessimistic we have become so morose my concern goes out for those type of people who are thinking that there is this huge monster called covid looming over their heads for them i thought i will share with you a small little 3 4 minute video about a gentleman who gave this uh, shared about uh, incident which happened in his childhood when a friend lent him a bicycle for one day he didn't have a bicycle and he was yearning for it so when his friend said you can have it for one day he was thrilled and what happened in the next four days when that boy did not come back to take the cycle it is in very simple hindi even those who do not understand sympathy and hindi i'm sure you will be able to grasp the gist of what he says so here is sunita with that quick little video सुबह शाम मौत का डर कितने लोग कहा मर गए इंडिया में कितने लोग मर गए अमेरिका में कितने लोग मर गए यूरोप में कितने लोग मर गए सुबह शाम बस यही आंकड़ा जो है हमारे पास आ रहा है चाहे वो व्हाट्सएप हो चाहे वो टेलीविजन हो चाहे वो अखबार हो चाहे वो इंटरनेट हो एक ही आंकड़ा मृत्यु 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 मौत सारी दुनिया की चर्चा का विषय बन गया है लोग तो पहले भी मर रहे थे रोड एक्सीडेंट्स में मर रहे थे फ्लू से मर रहे थे भूखमरी से मर रहे थे फ्लाइट्स क्रैश हो रही थी हजारों लाखों कारण थे लोगों के मरने के लेकिन आज जो डर का माहौल है वो पहले कभी नहीं था दोस्तों मौत तो सिर्फ एक पल की है लेकिन मौत के उस एक पल का डर सारी जिंदगी को मार देता है हम इस दुनिया में अपनी मर्जी से नहीं आए हैं और ना ही अपनी मर्जी से जाएंगे तो उसके बारे में सोच सोच के इतना क्या डरना मैं जब छोटा था मेरे एक दोस्त ने मुझे एक बार साइकिल लैंड की और कहा कि अनिल आप इस साइकिल को आज जी भर के चलाएं और कल सुबह मैं साइकिल को लेने आऊंगा मैंने बहुत खुशी से साइकिल चलाई मैं सातवें आसमान पे था इस गली से उस गली और मैंने बहुत इंजॉय किया और रात को मैं थक के सो गया लेकिन जब मैं सुबह उठा तो मेरा दिल उदास था क्योंकि मुझे मालूम था वो साइकिल लेने आ रहा है सुबह से शाम हो गई वो साइकिल लेने ही नहीं आया लेकिन सारा दिन मैं साइकिल का आनंद नहीं उठा पाया एक दिन दो दिन तीन दिन चार दिन तक मेरा मित्र साइकिल लेने नहीं आया लेकिन उन चारों दिन में मैंने साइकिल का आनंद नहीं उठाया क्योंकि मुझे साइकिल के जाने का डर था चार दिन की जिंदगी है आनंद से साइकिल चलाए ना और जिस दिन वो साइकिल लेने वाला आएगा लौटा देंगे मेरे दोस्त जो बिना डर के खुशी से जीना सीख गया वो बिना किसी गम के बिना किसी दुख के परमेश्वर के पास चला जाएगा क्योंकि मौत और जिंदगी तो परमेश्वर के हाथ में है हमारे हाथ में तो सिर्फ आज का ये पल है जी हां हमारे हाथ में सिर्फ आज का ये पल है और इस पल को खुल के जिए जिंदगी तो पहले भी थी मगर अब हम जीना शुरू करते हैं बिना डर के बिना भय के क्योंकि हमारे हाथ में आज का ये पल है और ये पल हमें परमेश्वर ने दिया है गॉड ब्लेस यू कैन वी मेक दैट एज आवर गाइडिंग स्पिरिट फॉर दिस ईयर एटलीस्ट नेक्स्ट सैटरडे 2021 विल बी ओवर एंड 2022 वुड हैव स्टार्टेड i'm going to discuss with you next saturday on another very fascinating topic which i have been working on exploring going deeper into since many years and that is to understand the difference between solitude and loneliness because this corona this uh, lockdowns this fear of what is going to happen has brought in a lot of loneliness and isolation so we are going to talk about that but if we can just take the spirit of what mr anil said that life is four days let's enjoy the one day that you have that cycle of life with us if we can do that if we can use that as a principle i would like to move on and i'd like to tell you let the worst happen let omicron come i may die of omicron i'm ready for it i have absolutely no regrets because i would rather succumb to something and push off at the end of a good glorious life rather than live a miserable life day after day day after day 
out of that fear, like he shared, that my friend will come and take away the cycle. So he's not even using the cycle which is there available to him. Are we doing this with our life? Are we not using our life on a day-to-day -day basis, thinking that tomorrow Omicron will come, COVID will come, something will happen, we will fall sick, people in my family will fall sick, somebody will die. So what we need to uh, do is to look at things in a positive manner. Almost a hundred years uh, uh, back, our great Nobel laureate, Guruji Rabindranath Tagore, brought out such a simple poem which was originally in Bengali and then translated beautifully into English. I'm amazed that what he said a hundred years back is more applicable today than it was at that uh, time. Ravindana Tagore spoke about his desire and his prayer to God as to where we should move forward to. So I requested Sunita, can you make a small slide out of that and show it to us? Most of you will have remembered it, but it's just a quick remembrance, a quick review and reading uh, uh, of it. Guruji said, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. Just think of it. Don't we need a prayer, a slogan like this today, much, much more than in the last century. But at the same time, you can keep on praying to God. But don't forget the proverb which says, God only helps those who help themselves. Isn't that true? You have to make your efforts. In my childhood, I was told by my grandfather about a very simple Arabic proverb. It says, trust in God, but tie up your camel first. You let your camel lose and then pray to God that my camel should not get lost. You're being stupid. But if you tie up the camel and say the rope should not break or so nobody should come and take away the camel or steal it, then it makes sense because you have taken that precaution of tying up the camel. So let us see what we can do in terms of gaining control over our lives. Instead of just sitting and lamenting, oh, COVID has come, this is happening, that is happening, what will happen, we have to take precautions, I can't send children to school, I can't allow somebody to come because my old parents are there at home. All this can go on endlessly, let me tell you. We have moved into an era where all the doors are slowly closing and there will be no end to it if, unless you break free from that of how Mr. Anil said, live one day at a time. And Guruji Rabindranath Tagore said that we have to break these narrow walls and gain that freedom of the mind. We got freedom of the country 75 years back. Now it's time to ensure that we get the freedom of the mind. Okay. So what I have done is I've just listed out a few very simple points. I was thinking of it since a very long time, last two, three weeks. I was going on and on adding and then I edited, condensed and I made out a few list of, you know, 10, 15 uh, simple, simple uh, tips. Some of them may be applicable to you. Some of them may not be. It's entirely up to you. I never thrust my ideas or my philosophy onto anybody. But I do create some sort of awareness. And what I'm sharing with you is based on experiences of people. It's not based on any theories or philosophies or any you know wise men saying or anything it is what i keep observing for years and years and years i've been observing people analyzing them understanding the consequences of certain actions good and bad based on that i thought you know why not 
condense it, put it down in a few bullet points and share it with you. So next week, when New Year starts, you can see how much you can implement and how much difference it is going to make. Let us start with the first thing which I just mentioned to you. Please stop being scared about children and old people. Most of the people whom I meet, the adults, they say, I don't mind whatever happens, I will face life. But I'm worried about my child or I'm worried about my parents. Somehow I think we are overdoing this protection thing. Let us stop being so scared. For the last two years, we have been scared. What happened? Forget about the deaths that took place. Forget about all the other things that happened. But millions and billions of people have been denied the basic thing of social interaction. And human beings thrive on social interaction. The people at the two ends of life, that is small children and very old people, they need social interaction much more than you and I do. And we are depriving them out of our fear. Then, stop or reduce inputs from social media, please. We are being bombarded with false news, scary news, all sorts of things. You as an individual, please make up your mind. Nothing is going to happen if you wait till tomorrow and check out on the newspaper or some such reliable source as to what actually happened in the last 24 hours and what do I need to do. But unless we do that, you are going to be unnecessarily stressed out and carried away. Your stresses are going to continuously increase if you do not reduce your inputs from social media. Then, remember stories like the emperor's new clothes. Everybody got carried away. This is all part of that social media stuff. Even though there was no social media in those days, everybody thought emperor is wearing such fantastic, uh, you know, uh, golden gown, which this man who wanted to cheat him had made and run away with the gold. It took one small boy to tell everybody that, sorry, I can't see the golden coat. I don't think the emperor is wearing anything at all. And then everybody woke up. This is what we need to do. You also remember the story of the boy who cried wolf? Every now and then, you know, when he was out uh, grazing sheep, he would suddenly start screaming, wolf, wolf, wolf has come, he'll take away the sheep. And people used to leave everything else and come running to save the sheep. And then he would laugh at them and say, see how I fooled you. The story goes that one fine day, the wolf actually turned up. And when this boy started shouting and screaming, nobody came. They said, this fellow always tries to fool us, forget it. And the wolf came and killed so many of his sheep and ran away. So these are very simple lessons of life which we have learned as children, but we need to implement it now, right? Okay. Ensure that children get social and emotional learning. I do not have any stand or comments on whether school should be reopened or not, or what should be done. All that, let it be decided by the authorities and the experts. But knowing that children have been deprived of schooling and the relevant uh, interactions and learning that comes beyond the classroom and beyond the textbooks, let us make a resolution that regardless of whether Omicron comes or not, we will put in all the efforts to see that children get social and emotional learning beyond the online classes or whatever else is going on now. We have to ensure that children get to meet others, get to interact, get to learn good and bad relationships, get to learn how to be assertive, how to say no, how to ask for what you want, how to face conflict and difficult situations, how to manage your own emotions. This, I think, should be one of the goals for 2022 to all responsible adults. Connect back to your earlier social contacts and positive people, not COVID positive people. Nowadays, see, 
how even the word positive has acquired such a negative uh, uh, meaning is so sad anyway the point uh, is i have been noticing that people have started withdrawing into their inner circle their immediate family members their extended family or their in-laws or their first cousin or whatever who whoever is very close to them they are interacting only with them somewhere we have stopped interacting with this second line of people ask yourself i am not there to comment on it you ask yourself have you done that have you started neglecting others just because there were lockdowns and you got used to you know not visiting people and going out now we have made it as an excuse we are not taking the trouble of going and meeting uh, people who used to be very good friends with whom we used to have a lot of interaction we stopped doing that please make a list of such people and reconnect with the good people in your life right save and invest wisely the lockdown has taught us that financially anything can happen stock markets can go up and down jobs may be lost salaries may be reduced anything can happen that complacency is gone so let us try and get out of what we call as the emi culture living you know of tomorrow's earnings buying things which are either not needed or buying things which are bigger and more expensive than what we need at a basic uh, level can we start saving and investing safely wisely investing for a rainy day as they say and you know that bangalore city had nothing but rains 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 for the past 3 months so you be aware of that also and then i'm sure you heard this word called minimalism right let's try and move towards a life which has got what they refer to as minimalism that is minimum needs that we have we will fulfill we will not deny ourselves we will not become you know ascetics or uh, people who give up on life but we will ensure that we stick to the minimal things that we need in life next review your career path particularly long term goals this is a good wake up call for the people who are in careers in mid careers where were you earlier where are you now and where are you headed the uh, pandemic has shaken up a lot of people even if it didn't happen to you i'm sure it happened to your friends your relatives your colleagues so let us not be as complacent as we used to be let us set long term goals that where is my domain expertise and what can i do about uh, it how i will set certain long term goals even if i because of the difficult circumstances yes jobs are not available so i can't afford to quit my job even if i'm unhappy even if there is a salary cut i will have to continue for the time being i need to somehow survive do all that but at the same time please visualize 2 years 5 years 10 years 20 years from now where will you be start setting those long term goals take up volunteering reach out to others time and again time and again it has been proven through different modes that when you feel unhappy when you feel incomplete when you feel life is not treating you properly reach out to others many others around you are not half as fulfilled or half as you know successful as you are if you can make it a habit to reach out to others put aside just 1 2 3 hours a week on a regular basis to reach out to others in whatever way you can if you are interested in joining our team of helping hand please feel free come we do very simple reaching out in terms of patients and their caregivers in hospitals and such places just giving them that solace that support that everyone who is sick or everyone who has a patient on their hand requires so please think very seriously if you are not doing it if you are doing it wonderful like congratulate you but in case you are not doing it please think seriously about taking up volunteering 
get the vaccination done please if you have not done it as you know all adults vaccination is available with that due, you know gap period from first to second uh, vaccine you have to give that gap and finish it off so please make sure all adults in your family and in your circle of influence have taken both the jabs it will go a long way in preventing illness and preventing deaths and knowing that the vaccination for children is around the corner and we can expect it within a few weeks or months whatever it is as soon as it comes please don't hesitate please don't go by rumors get your children also vaccinated ha ah, after all this now i am coming to new year resolutions isn't it true that many of us year after year keep making those resolutions and conveniently forgetting uh, uh, them this year i think it's a little more important so the things that i have already told you and another two three things which i will tell you before i wind up the first half of the uh, program i want you to please look at it a little more seriously than you were looking earlier of making this new year uh, resolutions you know that make it simple make it brief make it very manageable but say this is what i am going to do in this year 2022 reduce your addictions please if you have got used to alcohol due to these lockdowns if you have been smoking a lot if by chance you have got into any form of drugs even if you are overdoing on tea and coffee and colas please use this time to become aware that just because there are lockdowns just because there are restrictions on movement you cannot escape through addictions and of course the most what do you say bigger pandemic than covid is the addiction to technology i go on and on and on reminding people i don't know how many take me seriously please reduce your dependence on technology i mentioned earlier only social media now i am talking about everything else how many hours do you watch movies or videos on your laptop or on your uh, phone how many chat groups do you belong to how much of browsing you keep doing how many of those stand up comedians you keep uh, watching every now and then please reduce that addiction then do physical exercise yoga walking jogging whatever comes to you because the mind and body are very closely interconnected to um, each other the more you keep yourself physically fit the more your mind also will be you know uh, get uh, 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 going lakshmi has asked a very nice question address needs rather than wants yes absolutely right and then use all parts of your brain i'm not going into too much detail of explaining this i'm sure many of you know it and those who don't you can either browse on the net or you can get back to me individually i'll explain to you what this means see we have to use all parts of our brain to keep our brain healthy and active the same way as we have to use all parts of our body i can't do exercises only by moving my hands up and down i have to exercise my legs my neck my back my every part of my body no the same way you have to exercise all part of your brain do different types of activities which range from one end which is you know the mathematical logical analytical sequential part going into the other end of the spectrum which is you know creative and emotional and interpersonal and intuitive use all parts of your brain and that will ensure that you avoid loneliness loneliness is definitely a far bigger pandemic than covid and there is no vaccine against it so please make sure that you put in all these efforts and one of your goals for 2022 should be to avoid loneliness so with that just a quick break sima has something interesting to tell you about what to do in 2022 
Hear her out and I'll be back. Hello. So the last Saturday of this year and uh, uh, in Banjara, of course, there has been uh, uh, a lot of activity, a lot of action. Uh, classrooms are uh, bustling, classrooms online as well as offline. So yeah, the last one year we have uh, uh, for the first time gone online. And yeah, it has been very effective because we always back it up with mentoring, with that one on one personal interaction and all of that. Right. Uh, we saw um, different types of people uh, approach us. And uh, uh, for example, we had a lot of these Montessori teachers who said that the schools are shut and what is the way to upskill? Uh, so uh, they uh, could enroll for many of our programs like uh, the CCAD program, Child and Adolescent Development or Life Skills or uh, the counseling program. So this was one year where many uh, people looked at upskilling themselves. So that happened. A lot of corporates uh, who came who said we have been interested in psychology and um, we wanted to learn this. We want to understand human behavior. We want to understand what's happening. There are uh, pay cuts and so much of stuff happening in the organizations. So uh, what is the best way to, uh, you know, kind of reach out to others as well as work on self? So that way uh, they approached and many of them have enrolled for our uh, counseling programs. They're also doing upskilling uh, outside, like there are a lot of these open universities like IGNU and all that offering, MAMSC psychology. So many people like that are using uh, this time very effectively to learn more, to enhance their learning. Uh, right. So uh, that is the other area. And um, Coming to children, uh, we had a life skills program for children and uh, we thought, I don't know how effective, uh, we don't know how effective it is going to be online, but it turned out to be one fun uh, and uh, not only fun, a lot of learning uh, happened there itself. So we had an enthusiastic uh, uh, team uh, working with children on their life skills. So uh, we keep on, uh, you know, working on our uh, uh, based on the, uh, you know, the requirement and your feedback. We keep on coming up with various programs for a little more uh, uh, serious, uh, uh, you know, learners of psychology. We had the PGDP program this year, uh, again, for psychotherapies, overview of, uh, you know, various types of therapies and all of that. So um, based on, you know, what people require, uh, what uh, people want to upskill uh, on. So we have uh, all of these programs which, uh, you know, uh, run from time to time. And uh, many just want to come and volunteer. So they come and approach us. And yeah, Ali was talking about the helping hand, uh, uh, you know, uh, team. So you can join that or just come just if you want to figure out what needs to be done. Both youngsters age is not a you know barrier at all at any age group. If you want to figure out what is good for me. So again, 2022 is going to be a year of lot of upskilling, uh, learning and all of that. Come have a chat with us. Come if you want to do an aptitude test or something, figure out what is good for you. So and if you just want to come and chat with us or come for free counseling, we are always welcome. You're always welcome. Right. So see you again next year. And uh, have a fantastic uh, uh, New Year's, uh, uh, you know, Eve, and then have a wonderful New Year. Thank you. Yes, Sunita took you back again to. Guruji Rabindranath Tagore, whom I will never be able to forget in my life for the vision, for the farsightedness that people like this. And he is not the only one. We've had such great people. That's what I keep jokingly telling our people that why is it that we only talk about the Westerners and the people from the uh, other countries who have something to tell us? Our country has been full of cultural, philosophical, psychological you know, treasures, which I think we should keep exploiting. Let us do it this year. And Amita says, in my younger days, when our household appliances used to stop working, 
we would repair and use it but today we just junk it go for new better ones amita let me tell you some people are doing it with relationships also so if my spouse is not being as nice to me as i were ex expect why not change the spouse also in a light, lighter way of course but that is what it is that's why i was really happy when amita joined us uh, uh, you know at uh, manthan and i sent her an email also congratulating her and wishing that you know this is how relationships develop this is how people connect to each other sometimes very uh, you know unknown people people from very different backgrounds they get together and how our network can be built up with no obligations no expectations but just the knowledge that we are there for each other let all these covids and all keep coming but we as human beings connect to each other in fact we should learn a lesson from animals if you see the way dogs and other pets how they respond i think that's what we also need to uh, uh, do uh, rubina is asking life skills for children starts at what age please let me know we normally divide them into two uh, groups uh, roughly uh, those who are above 10 11 years of age up to adulthood we make them into one group and those who are below at uh, level as long as you see we go more by their mental and their emotional age not by their chronological age i've come across 4 5 year olds who are so mature that they can handle themselves along with 10 year olds and you know be part of that team so we just uh, you know interview them analyze them and we say okay this is where i think this child is going to fit in on the other hand we also at times have children who are fairly grown up but intellectually challenged so we put them along with the smaller ones and they enjoy them themselves so this is how we go about the uh, thing okay so uh, yes i'm getting a lot of good morning and merry christmas messages but i want to get from you some messages about what you are planning to do about 2022 we have just a week left and next saturday we are going to be starting off with the brand new year i want to know what and how you people have decided to go ahead with uh, you know whatever you want to do in uh, life mustafa has asked do you treat mental disorders we don't treat mental disorders mustafa but we guide people families we act as a liaison between the professional like the psychiatrists and those people and the needs of the individual and the family members we are a frontline organization who are open just now as uh, sima was telling me anybody can walk in come discuss their issues if you have somebody you know close to you who has some form of mental disorder we'll sit and discuss what are the options open how you can do it people who can afford to go for professional help and treatment people who cannot afford where are the means by which without paying money they can get some good therapies and treatment all this we uh, work and uh, as she told you our services on all these areas are free surak has asked a very nice question how can we start dealing with cumulative uh, um, stress step number 1 become aware that i am stressed out don't be under denial those who are denying themselves they are the ones who suffer most once you accept that yes i am under stress be you know um, courageous enough or open enough to acknowledge my vulnerability don't try to be a superman or a superwoman i can handle any stress i can do this and more so i come across people who say earlier i had bigger challenges i stress uh, faced it so now what is so great about this no earlier your basic stress levels were low now the cumulative stress levels have gone up because of certain experiences of life the third um, uh, step uh, would be to identify where the stressors are coming from so if it is because of a horrible relationship with x if it is because of my work if it is it because of the financial crunch that i am going through first identify the sources from where the stress is coming and see whether you can either eliminate or at least reduce that so that you are at least partially relieved that now i know i can me mentally insulate myself from this person who always keeps putting me down and because of that my stress levels are going up so i will try to insulate myself from that uh, person or i will try to make some alternative arrangements for my financial needs 
once that has been uh, uh, done then start working on management of uh, uh, stress here i'm very clear on one thing that there is no one size fits all you have to find your right way of doing it i mentioned physical exercise yoga walking jogging starting from physical activities like that going on to mental activities some people get solace in prayer and spirituality some people get solace in reading good you know intellectual books some people find solace in music some people find solace in gardening some people find solace in volunteering and helping other people try out and see which suits you best lilavati says want to approach life rationally i just want to tell you what i mentioned in the first half don't approach life only rationally that means you are doing only left brain exercise along with approaching life rationally approach life emotionally also intuitively creatively that is when the correct balance uh, uh, comes farida says want to be peaceful like my son yes farida sometimes our children teach us so much no we think just because we are older or we are more experienced we know everything and we only keep giving lectures to children but it's amazing what we can learn from today's children if we are open to learning from them nazia says i decided to be happy and leave my ego yes nazia if we can all even if we can't leave even if we can reduce our ego i tell you lots can be done you can really be happy roshan says be optimistic without fear and carry on your responsibilities happily with a pure intention that's very important this helps in achieving your goals and also reaching out to people who need your help merry christmas and a fearless 2022 that's a very good slogan that roshan has given let's call it the fearless 2022 carry out your responsibilities happily is what she said and i agree minita says you have shown us a new path by helping and counseling others i am really enjoying this new journey and i get a satisfaction at the end of the day that people are able to connect and share to us about their thoughts and feelings just wanted to say a big thank you i accept your thanks with humility and i thank you also vinita for having been all of you who have been part of this journey who have been volunteers who have been who have done dcs who have been carrying our mission through i genuinely and sincerely thank each one of you for being part of this huge and continuously increasing family of people who believe that overall holistic well being of human beings without selection of caste creed color gender those are the ones who will get immense satisfaction when they look back at uh, uh, life shobha has asked how we can we manage our ego and other emotions ego and emotions are two different things managing ego is as i said you no know, first becoming aware that i have certain ego issues i'm getting offended by this one i'm feeling very important and i'm feeling people are not giving me importance so i have to bring down this thing that i am only a small speck in this whole universe there's a giant universe in that there is one tiny little solar system which is run by our sun in that out of those eight nine planets earth happens to be one of them in this earth out of almost 8 billion human beings and so many trillions of other living beings i am one of them start visualizing how what a small speck you are in this universe and tell yourself i am thankful i am grateful for having been given this life i will make the most of it but i will not impose myself on others management of emotions is a topic by itself i will not touch upon it because it needs a lot of time and attention maybe we will fix up one of these saturday talks on only on management of emotion that's when i'll go more in detail in the meanwhile surika says how can we help counselees enjoy the cycle ride when some unexpected verbal bombs are thrown at them from their friends and their loved ones yes we have to learn how to insulate ourselves every time when these verbal bombs are thrown at somebody tell that person 
let it get over. At that moment, you'll be very worked up, you'll be agitated, you may cry, you may scream. Get it over with. Calm down, relax, sleep over it. And then rationalize by saying, this is what the person said, and this is the reality. That person said, you are stupid, you don't know how to ride a cycle. I know what I am, right? I know that, yes, once in a while I have fallen down, once in a while I have lost balance, but it's not true when that person says that you're so stupid, you can't ride a cycle. I know what I am. In case I don't uh, have that confidence, catch hold of one or two very good, genuine and rational people and ask them. You will get the answers and you will be able to handle those type of uh, uh, people. Ah. Yasmin says, thank you, Ali and Team Bandera, for making 2021 so beautiful. And I look forward to 2022 to put it in action. That's the spirit that I want each one of you to have. Yasmin says that uh, 2021 has been so beautiful. That may not be true for all of you. For some of you, it may have been a horrible year, as I said. You may have actually faced death. You may have faced serious illness and got out of it. You may have had financial problems. You may have had so many other restrictions. Doesn't matter. The point is that can you still bounce back and tell yourself that, okay, whatever has to happen will happen, but I will learn how to face stress with the least distress. That is in my control. Nobody can take away my emotions, my thought process from me. If I decide to be an optimist, believe me, nothing can hold me uh, back. It takes practice. It takes efforts. And every time something negative is thrown at you, it's like stumbling and falling down. But as somebody said, it is not how many times you stumbled and fell down. It is how many times you got up after stumbling and falling down. That is what makes your life and your the meaning to your uh, life and the purpose of your uh, uh, life. These are very, very simple things, but that's how we have to go about it. Varnika says, I'm going to be more congruent, being unabashedly myself, appreciating myself. Yes. As they say, charity starts at home, isn't it? So I'm going to look inward and I'm going to be congruent. That's another you know, technique to overcome ego issues. Who am I? What am I? I'm going to be realistic about what I am. I'm neither going to boast and try to, you know, push up my ego and say I'm the greatest person in this whole world. At the same time, I'm not going to allow my self-esteem to be pulled down by people who keep on making negative uh, remarks. I'm going to face uh, that. Lilavati says some amount of stress in life is necessary to keep us alive. Let us learn to enjoy life with stress. Yes, if you remember long back, I had done a Saturday session on stress in which I had defined the difference between eustress and distress. That's what psychologists tell us. Eustress is the good stress, which actually motivates us, which inspires us, and which pushes us to perform. It's only when the stress goes beyond our capacity to accept that slowly it starts becoming distress, and we start getting uh, pulled, out, pulled down because of uh, that. Ha, ah, Roshan says, over the years, Ali has imparted knowledge to so many people. I feel he has to be recognized by the world. No, Roshan, I don't want to be recognized by the world. In fact, tomorrow, our helping hand is being recognized by the Association of the Newspapers and Journalists, which I feel is a very humbling exercise. And um, we are uh, requesting our coordinator, Kanmani, to go across tomorrow and represent helping hand and get that thing. Anyway, what I wanted to say is that we are not looking at... Uh, you know, the world to recognize, we always believe there's one thing which I am a very strong believer in. One human being is as important as a million human beings. Tomorrow, if somebody says, I lost a dear friend, a very dear friend of mine or a relative of mine died. If you turn around and say there was an earthquake in Ethiopia and 10,000 people died, how does it sound to that person? He says, I don't care. My sentiment, my feelings, my distress is for this one friend that I lost. It is not numbers. So always keep that in mind. If Roshan appreciates uh, uh, me, if Sheila appreciates me, I'm more than happy. 
Ah, Seema says, very fortunate to be part of your uh, team. You're an amazing role model. I want each one of you to become role models and I want each one of you to, you know, uh, become team leaders. So my uh, resolution for 2022 is that I'm going to take a backseat and I'm going to see how well you people become role models and team members and this and that. In fact, I strongly believe that the good, uh, you know, qualities of a leader is when a leader can make himself redundant, where his learners, his followers, his students overtake him. That should be the aim of any good leader, mentor, trainer, and you also should keep in mind, if it, whether it's your own children, whether it's somebody whom you are under control, let's make that a point that if we are fortunate enough to have certain skills, certain abilities by which we become a leader or a mentor or a trainer to some <clears throat> teacher to somebody let us aim for making those people rise far above us ah surika says looking forward to your talk on emotional management i really hope you would deliver one yes we have it planned out we are going to have a session on uh, emotional management uh, we'll just announce the date uh, very soon surika i also give a lot of significance to that particular area of our lives. That is how well you manage emotions. It, you know, everything starts with that as the basics. Becoming aware, self-awareness, becoming aware of your emotions and how do you manage them? Yasmin says, Ali, you have in fact helped me bounce back. I personally had my breakthrough in spite of all that. I feel 2021 was beautiful. That is exactly what I am telling all of you. In spite of everything that happened, things are still very beautiful. That is the spirit which keeps taking you, uh, um, you know, uh, ahead. Kannani says, we will make you proud. Yes, I'm already proud of all of you, but continue with that mission. There's no end to it. There's no you know, specific uh, benchmark or something. It's a process which goes on. Let it spread and let it spread one at a time. It's exactly like Mother Teresa uh, said, you know, what I am doing is a drop in the ocean, a drop in the ocean. But the ocean would have been poorer without that drop. That, that type of uh, spirit. Sheila is asking, please elaborate on you stress. Okay. You stress or the good stress, as they call it, is the stress which makes us productive which makes us be motivated and which inspires us for example if i'm looking for a job and they say that we are giving you a job and we will give you x rupees salary that you know causes stress to me that i have to work i have to be there at time at nine o'clock i have to be there six days a uh, week so what happens is there is stress Till yesterday, I was relaxing, I was sitting at home. From tomorrow onwards, I've got a job, I've got to go, right? But at the end of the month, I'm going to get so many thousands or so many lakhs as salary. So while I, the stress has increased, it is eustress. Once I go there, I am told that we'll make you a team leader. If you perform this, 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 and you complete this project by December 31st, then we will give you a reward and we'll give you a promotion. Now again, the stress has gone up. Now I have a target to meet, but it is you stress. I say, yeah, I can do it. In the next so many days, I will somehow complete this and I will prove to it. My stress levels are higher, but it is good uh, stress. But like I said, if I have a boss who puts unreasonable demands on me, if by 31st December you don't complete this, this, this target, then we will punish you or we'll cut your salary or we'll throw you out. The eustress becomes distress. This is a very basic, uh, simple uh, thing. Ah, Nandini says, reach out genuinely to people. Yes, I think that word genuinely is a very, very important word, which also translates as congruence. Am I congruent? Am I genuine? Do I really mean what I say? Do I put into practice what I commit to do? That should be a bottom line which should govern all our uh, you know, actions. We should ensure that we are, whatever we are reaching out, 
has to be genuine not to get you into you know some good books of somebody or to get some rewards or something uh, like that yes Sheila, you stress is the stress that drives you to act which motivates you which inspires you which increases your efficiency and however tired you may feel at the end of it however stressed out you feel you feel nice about it you feel thrilled that yes i have achieved this and i've done it with my own accord with my own efforts that's how people you know actually use you stress as a means to achieve more and uh, uh, more starting even with children we have to help children to have you stress which should not convert into distress i am watching with a lot of you know pain next tuesday i have written a very elaborate article for deccan herald it will come out in the tuesday uh, newspaper the dh supplement uh, education supplement that comes every week on what we are doing with children by increasing their stress by asking six standard eight standard children to go for iit coaching asking a child to go to school study do homework face tests is you stress telling a six standard uh, child that you have to get admission into iit according to me is distress that is the difference everywhere i think this is what we are uh, doing sometimes we are doing it to our elders also don't do this don't do that don't get into this take care of yourself if you fall down what will happen who's going to take care of you you're causing distress yes gently you can prevent you can <clears throat> ensure that you you know are keeping your elders uh, safe particularly if they are not very mobile or they are not keeping very good health you can take all those precautions but ensure that you know and practice the difference between you stress and distress the same thing applies to the resolutions or whatever you know i spoke about with regard to 2022 please set some very small realistic goals for the year and some very very lofty long term goals which you don't know when you will be able to uh, you know achieve uh, that ah nazia is asking can you please take a session on usage of social media and kids these generations yes i think we should do that so i request seema and sunita to make a note of it and when we are making our schedules for the next few weeks next few weeks we have already made the schedules but maybe beyond january the schedule when we make we should have this usage of social media of the kids in this generation and let me also tell you when you say uh, usage of social media and kids i can tell you kids who are 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 also need it there are so many kids who have gone far beyond being kids but they are still don't know how the usage of social media that's why i put it as one of the requests or one of the techniques or tips for 2022 please become aware of your uh, uh, use nothing is as sad to see that most of them are running a fools uh, race i keep reminding people who are caught up in this rat race no i keep telling you telling them rather that even if you win the rat race you are still a rat that is what you need to understand i want to break free Farida says, "My long-term goal is work for inclusive society. I know Farida has already been doing a lot of work in this area. It's not even a long-term goal for her. It's a day-to-day -day goal. I've seen wherever, whenever needed, she has been rising to this uh, uh, occasion. Get back to Project Giggle Garden, inclusive preschool. Yes, these are the things which people like Farida have done, facing all sorts of hurdles, challenges." negativity from others they have done all that and they have achieved these are all the very quiet and very simple role models who are there right in front of uh, you our own team of volunteers starting from one of our senior most mr ram sami who refuses to take any you know award or any recognition from anywhere we had a big fight with him for this tomorrow's uh, felicitation to helping and he bluntly refused to you know be a part of that program and receive the uh, uh, award but 
that does not belittle the fact that they are doing wonderful uh, things, no? And to wind up Roshan's statement, nurture your soul, everything will fall in the right place. You will always be happy. And on those days when you're not happy, don't mind it. Happiness, sadness are all part of life. Let's start. Let's not expect to be always happy. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are sad. We'll face it. And that's how we will end today's session and the last session for this year. And I'm going to look forward to meeting you all on the first Saturday of 2022, that is on 1st January. See you and bye-bye.